There's been a bit of irritation lately in the Illustrator community about Bleed. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to create a new file and I'm also going to set up Bleed for that, which is here in the new file dialog. And let's create that. And then you see the guides for the Bleed and we have this button here. And if you roll over it, then you get this tooltip, which says print Bleed extends graphic to Bleed using generative AI and use it one credit per generation unless you have a plan with unlimited access and you can turn it off in the preferences. What does this tell you? First of all, if you want to have bleed in Illustrator, you do not need to spend a credit on it. This credit only is taken when you use generative AI to create bleed. Let's assume you have some shapes in your file like this and like this. Then of course, if they are positioned like so, then you need to make them larger. And in order to do so, you can just make it like this and like so. And then you have created bleed. This will not cost you anything. Also, on top of that, you do not even need these guides. In order to have bleed in your file, let's go to the document setup and set these to zero. Then it's perfectly okay to just create larger objects. And then when saving as, save as a PDF. And then of course you need to override the document bleed settings and set up whatever is appropriate. And then you have bleed in the file. Of course, it's much cleaner to set up bleed in the actual file because then you also remember to use it. I'm going to cancel out of here. Let's go into the document setup again and let's set up this bleed. You see the button is gone, but in order to turn it off permanently, go to settings and general. And there we have this setting, show print bleed generative AI button on bleed. And if you turn that off, then it's gone. I'm going to turn it on again because I want to show you how the feature works. Let's go into this file. And you see in here, I do not want to just enlarge it because I think these leaves are just positioned perfectly. I want to have additional illustration here, but that can get quite laborious. Here's where generative AI can get quite useful. So let's go and turn it all on. So I'm going to the document setup and first I'm going to set up bleed. And you see now we've got the bleed guides, but we do not have the button. And that is because in the layers panel, I have locked a layer. And once I unlock that, then you see the button is there. But what will happen when I generate bleed here is that all of this here, this box and the text will get into that generative object. And I want to have that separate. So what I'm going to do is take these two and cut them command X or control X on windows. And now we're going to use the generative AI, just click on it and it will generate bleed. That will take a couple of minutes, depending on the complexity of everything. And then you get three proposals for this and you can check out which one you want. We're just going to take a look at them. And I like there's some detail here, which is stronger here. So I think I'm going to go with the first. So that's okay. And now we're going to create another layer and I'm going to edit paste in front to get the text into this again. And I need to put it into the other layer because I still had the generative object selected. So we have it separate and can still edit that. So you see, this is what the button is about. This is how you can turn it off and how you can use bleed in general.